lesson on uh, the sociology research methods. We're going to look at interviews today, structured and unstructured. Okay, so here's uh, some stuff on questionnaires from the previous lesson. So, interviews, quantitative and qualitative. Really important words here. A quantitative thing can be turned into numbers. A qualitative is descriptive, it is words. Here's the key words that go along with this lesson. Okay. Quantify, turn to numbers. So, structured interviews. So remember, in sociology, we use interviews quite a lot. But it's not like on telly. Yeah. We tend to use them if it's structured in a structured and scientific way. We come up with a list of questions. We call that a schedule of questions. You talk to hundreds of people, perhaps. You ask all of them the same questions. If you do that, you can compare the answers and produce numbers, statistics. For question three, 52% said this. Yeah? If you've got the same questions to hundreds of people, you can compare the answers. So, if we compare it to participant observation, it's much quicker. Therefore, it's much cheaper and it produces lots of data. But, the big problem, that's the one, people may refuse. People say, can you do questionnaire for me? And they say, no. Yeah, so that's a disadvantage. It's not as reliable because you're not seeing it for yourself. You're asking people about things instead of watching them do it. So it's less reliable. And the interviewer can affect the person being interviewed. If you want to know about racism and people's experience of racism, if a white person asking a black person about racism, the black person may be less likely to be give truthful answers because they're embarrassed or upset people, that sort of thing. Also, it is still expensive, especially if you've got to use well-trained interviewers. Yeah? And it's really big on the Hawthorne effect. Because the people you are studying know you're studying them, it can affect the data. It's the Hawthorne effect. So that's a structured interview. What you can do instead is what's called an unstructured interview. It's more like a conversation. You ask as few questions as possible. You take more time to do it. You get to know somebody. It's more like a discussion, a conversation, a chat. And here's some examples. Dolbash and Dolbash, here they are, here's their book, wish to uh, study domestic violence. Well, questionnaires and structured interviews are not going to work. If you're going to speak to women who've been the victim of domestic violence and you read off to them 100 questions in a structured interview, it's not going to work as well. It's a quite a delicate subject. So they spent a lot of time talking to women repeatedly, the same women, getting to know them, having a conversation. And they got a lot more depth. The women trusted them, a lot more back and forth. And because the women got to know them and began to trust them, they were more honest with their answers. They got more details. They got a lot more background. And they made a much better research they got. And Oakley also did unstructured interviews. In her famous work, she's done loads of times on the dual burden. Those women she was studying, she got to know them. She found, you know, by talking to them repeatedly, by having lots of conversations, she allowed them to ask her questions. She got to explore what does an event mean to women. Not just what's happened, what does it mean to you? Yeah? So if you do this, it's intimidating. If you interview like that, it's intimidating. Oakley found it. She's too male, too patriarchal. If you do this, people are more relaxed, and they're more likely to give you a fuller and therefore better answer. However, our structured interviews are less reliable because they are not all the same, with the same question, the same order. And because they take a lot longer, the sample must be smaller and therefore less reliable. 